Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Within the last few days or so, attorney John Deaton, who is the attorney that's seeking to intervene in the SEC vs. Ripple case on behalf of 17,000 XRP holders, uh, he stated that if, if you want to have full confidence that XRP absolutely is not a security, all you have to do is go and read the Telegram case, which was another cryptocurrency in the operation since been shut down. It was another uh, cryptocurrency that the uh, SEC did come after. And so while it was found that the organization uh, like propping up the, 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 uh, the, the Telegram token, known as the Gram for short, while it was found that that organization uh, indeed was at fault, it was also found that the Gram itself wasn't just security, as I will highlight in this video. And so existing law and precedent, actually according to John Deaton, and I, I, I don't think that he'd say I'm, I'm uh, doing injustice by, by stating this, I mean, this is what I'm getting from him, uh, willing to be corrected, but this I'm going to share with you the specifics. That's sure as hell what it looks like to me. Uh, I, I think according to John Deaton, based on law and precedent, like XRP... It isn't a security today. It, it, it certainly cannot be. Now, of course, I do understand that isn't going to stop the asshats over at the SEC from doing whatever they want. Because, look, I understand that they're sue happy. That's that's what they want to do. They're on this mission to just sue everyone into oblivion. It looks to me like a power grab and a money grab. That, that seriously is what it looks like to me. But if you just follow the law, according to John Deaton here, uh, then we could have nice things instead of not having nice things. That's effectively what's going on here. Um, and so I also want to talk about uh, like what what were the motives behind all of this? Uh, two attorneys within the XRP community, including John Deaton, end up uh, speculating a little bit on this. Like, why did, like, at the end of Jay Clayton's term, why did he, with the SEC, decide to pursue Ripple then? What was the intent of that? So plenty to talk about in this latest Moon Lambo Hot Jack. But I do want to be clear at the outset that I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos as a fun little hobby about Ripple and XRP and crypto and asshats. But that's all that's going on here, damn it. And if you don't like it, you can get out. So here's a tweet from XRP community member Arturo Portilla, who also happens to be an attorney. He shared a quote from the SEC which reads as follows. The court should avoid setting precedents with such far-reaching consequences. And here's another one, also from the SEC. According to the regulator, in the event of a loss, future defendants will be able to refer to the decision in the Ripple case. Yeah, no kidding. I wouldn't mind that in the least, frankly. And that was written in a, a recent uh, court filing. Uh, in, in which, uh, <laughs> well, actually I made a whole video about that, but... Uh, basically, it's the SEC uh, bitching up a storm that, uh, you know, so-and-so defense from Ripple shouldn't be followed because, uh, you know, if, if Ripple wins, bad precedent sets, SEC loses power. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my god, then have a better case. That's effectively what I was thinking. And so, um, anyway, John Deaton retweeted that from Arturo Patia and wrote, the court should follow the law. And Arturo Portilla responded to that and wrote, Perhaps we now know why the complaint was filed the same day the past administration concluded its mandate. And so, to be clear, he's, of course, talking about Jay Clayton on his way out the door in, in late December anyway. And then Arturo continues, There's a possibility they were aware that the facts slash law weren't completely on their side, so they preferred to throw the embarrassment hot potato to the entrant team. And then attorney John Deaton responds to that and wrote, what I want to know is what did Clayton say to Gensler when they met during the presidential transition? Did Clayton inform Gensler what he intended to do? Did Gensler object? Did Clayton offer to hold off? Did Gensler give his blessing? Now, I'll tell you what, that I would love to know because the two did meet. So you're talking about Jay Clayton, the former SEC chair, and Gary Gensler, the uh, the guy who's now in charge of the SEC. Uh, they did talk. Uh, wouldn't you love to have been a fly on the wall in that room, right? And so Arturo responded, I see your point. But at the end of the day, what he communicated or not to Clayton isn't very relevant, is it? He succeeded at passing most of the responsibility and reputational costs 
to the next guy. The news will most likely not mention Clayton when the, ca when the case is resolved. And then John wrote, I agree with you. My curiosity is only that, curiosity. At the end of the day, you don't file the most significant enforcement action in modern history regarding the hottest topic in global finance, which is digital currency, and then walk out the door the next day. It stinks of corruption. No kidding. And so, given that John Deaton tweeted quite simply and saliently, the court should follow the law. Well, you might question, what is the law? And John Deaton did just that in this, in this tweet. Check this out. He wrote, and what is the law? And, and what I'm about to read to you next. This is a quote from Judge Castell of the Telegram case. And listen up, because what he found here, and, he, and they are talking about that the Howie case, which I'm just going to have to assume for the sake of this video, you're, you're caught up to speed and you're aware of the Howie case here. Uh, but uh, he, he's saying effectively what happened in the Telegram case, uh, it's the same thing that happened... In the Howey case, check this out. <laughs> uh, so this is the quote now from Judge Castell. Cryptocurrencies, sometimes called tokens or digital assets, are a lawful means of storing or transferring value and may fluctuate in value as any commodity would. In the abstract, an investment of money in a cryptocurrency utilized by members of a decentralized community connected via blockchain technology which itself is administered by this community of users rather than by a common enterprise, is not likely to be deemed a security under the familiar test laid out in SEC versus W.J. Howey Company. And so right there, it, it, but you, you hear what he's arguing, right? A what he's saying is a sufficiently decentralized cryptocurrency with, with, with no central operator, right? Uh, it's, it's very unlikely... It, it very unlikely that um, it, it would be de deemed a security if you apply the Howey test right there. That's crucial, but there's more. Check this out. John Deaton writes, Judge Castell also made clear. And again, I'm, I'm, let me extra be clear before I move on to the next part. This matters because the XRP ledger is one of the most decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies on the entire, plan on the entire planet. Uh, arguably, the XRP ledger is more decentralized than Bitcoin. You cannot 51% attack the XRP ledger. It does not exist. That is not a thing. With Bitcoin, and mind you, I'm still a fan of Bitcoin. I'm just, I'm stating actual facts here. But with Bitcoin, you can actually have a chain reorganization. Whereas with the XRP ledger, the transactions are absolutely immutable. There cannot be a chain reorganization. Now, John Deaton continues and wrote, Judge Castell also made clear, and here's another quote from Judge Castell, and he's quoting the Howey case here. Um, the, sec the security in this case is not simply the gram, which is little more than alphanumeric cryptographic sequence. Howey refers to an investment contract, i.e. a security, as a contract, transaction, or scheme. And so there you go. It's, it's something that we've been saying within the XR XRP community forever. Like, XRP, it's just code. There's nothing about it inherently that makes it a security. And here you have uh, Judge Castell uh, applying the law as it should be applied based on what was uh, what was agreed upon. Uh, well, that's not may not be the most salient, but our best way to word that. But uh, the uh, based on the outcome of the Howey case, that informed the decision here, right? And so then John Deaton wrote the following. And if there was any doubt about the token itself, in uh, Telegram 2, Judge Castell clearly states the following. Here's another quote from the judge. The security was neither the Graham purchase agreement nor the Graham, but the entire scheme, end quote. And so again, the Graham, that's the cryptocurrency of, of Telegram, the bigger name Telegram, so Graham for short. It, it's not the, the Graham itself that was the security, it was the entire scheme, which is why if you're looking at what's happening with Ripple and XRP, it could be the case that Ripple is found to be in some sort of violation, which I'm not saying I'm a fan of, uh, but that may end up being the case, even though Ripple did not create XRP. And you'd think that that would have to have some weight, but we'll see how it unfolds. I, I don't know how it's going to unfold. It's, it's edge of our seats every day, right, friends? That's pretty much how it is. So 
uh, clearly not the case that XRP could possibly be. If you're just applying the Howey case uh, to, to be considered here, there's no way that XRP itself could be considered a security. Now, that doesn't mean, here's the other thing that matters though, and so we can be thrilled. Okay, so XRP, if we just follow the law, XRP, no way it's a security. Let's say that comes to pass. Okay, yes, great, but I'm still going to acknowledge that a, 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 the primary use case of XRP in terms of utility today, and there's lots of utility, but the, the primary part of it is XRP is, uh, is as a bridge currency, and that's the messaging that has gotten out into the world, people that invest in crypto. So anybody, uh, if, if they see that, for instance, if Ripple loses its ability uh, to, to sell XRP as a funding mechanism or to manage liquidity, which is core to XRP being positioned sufficiently as a bridge currency, if that news, if that actually happened and that news broke, I still think that would shock the markets and it would be very bad. It doesn't mean XRP would go away. I don't believe that. Uh, but it would be very bad in the short term in terms of, of price action. I'm not saying that to scare anybody. I don't think that's uh, likely to happen at all personally. But there's also admittedly no way to know exactly how this is going to unfold. I I'll tell you what, in all this pre-trial hearings we've been seeing, though, the SEC, frankly, is having their ass handed to them by, uh, by Ripple's lawyers, who, frankly, are top shelf. And so uh, John Deaton then wrote, in, in Telegram... Uh, there were purchase agreements between the investors and the company Telegram. So let me pause. I'm already going to have to pause right there. Yes, that is a core difference. That is a key difference between what happened with Ripple and XRP and anybody that holds XRP. Ripple didn't have an, an, an sort of contract with any sort of end user. There, there is no con any. If you hold XRP today, you do not have any sort of investor agreement with Ripple. This is very different. And it was easy, it's easy to see why all these companies that had ICOs, why they ended up getting slammed, is because there was an agreement right there. Ripple never did that, though. It just didn't happen. And then John Deaton writes the following. J. Castell basically said the oranges in Howie weren't securities and neither are digital tokens, whether it's grams or XRP or whatever. In Telegram, like Howie, there were actual purchase purchase contacts involved and the court said even the contracts themselves aren't the securities even though people have called for a ripple test or a more modern test than howie when applied to digital assets make no mistake about it under current law with howie and telegram xrp holders win all we need the court to do is follow existing legal precedent and see, therein lies the danger, though. Will they follow the law and existing legal precedent? And that's why we don't know. It's like, yes, even if the law's on your side, it's not always the case that justice is done. So I'm optimistic. I do think that the law and history is on the side of Ripple and XRP. I think that's going to come to pass. I think that the SEC is probably recognizing increasingly so that they have the most ridiculous uphill battle ahead of them. But um, it, it, it could still potentially be months until we uh, get some sort of clarity via, uh, via potential settlement because uh, until you get close to the end or to the very end of the discovery process, you don't know what ammo for sure the other side has. And so why give up quite before that? So it, it can still happen, but we could be months out even if that's going to happen. So we shall see. But this is what we're working with here. My gosh. I'll tell you what, um, I feel fantastic about XRP. It's not going away. It's not. It's absolutely not. You could outright ban it in the United States, which is not what we're talking about here now. I don't think that's going to happen. But even if you did, even if you could do that, it persists. It's global. You know, there are somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 countries on the planet, depending on who you ask, because not every country recognizes every other country on the planet, but they're not all going to ban. In fact, the rest of the world, where there has been clarity, they've determined that XRP is not a security and deserves to continue existing in perpetuity, and so it is, elsewhere on the planet. So we just got to get past this, but I can see why John Deaton a few days ago, he said, if you want to understand why XRP, while well, the law's on our side, study the Telegram case. And then he put this thread out, so I just I just had to share it with you. I thought it was some cool stuff, but I'll wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo.